Hello, I'm Aki Vehtari and I'm telling you about a Postery database called Postery DB. Most of the work for this has been done by Mons Magnusson, but during the StanCon he's moving to Sweden as he's studying a uh, new position as an assistant professor uh, in University of Uppsala. In addition, we've, uh, there's contributors uh, for the package have been Eero Linna, Oliver Bjernefeldt, Paul Christian Bergner, and we've received a uh, lot of useful feedback from Stan community. Um, so, briefly, uh, in a poster DP, we have a database of posteriors. And so, one posterior is one model and specific data for that. Um, the purpose is that we are we can use this uh, when testing software code and algorithms and do explorative analysis of new algorithms or modifications and for this testing and exploration we need many different types uh, of posteriors with some useful metadata. I'll tell more about the details of PostgreDB later, but briefly so that like this database has then these objects, um, posteriors, which they are, as I mentioned, are consisting of models and data sets. And then we have also reference posterior draws pre-computed uh, to make it easier uh, to make these comparisons. Um, when I was thinking about that we should have this kind of project, I severely underestimated the amount of work needed for this. Uh, I knew that, it, of course, it's much more work than just having a bunch of um, model code and then running experiments for a paper for a few different models and data sets. But it's, it's actually a lot of work then to um, have, have the high quality needed so that it would be uh, more generally useful. And so there's the lot of work on extensive testing of all parts, all the postures should be so that they are actually uh, working, compile, and you get some results. Uh, easy access from R and Python for better accessibility, and then documenting everything. A uh, lot of work, and uh, the Mons and the other contributors have, uh, have done uh, great job um, so far. Um, and a bit more about these specific examples, how we can, uh, why we started building and what are the kind of the use cases. One big part is software testing. Um, software testing has, has different also kind of um, roles. For example, unit testing for testing each small piece separately, and which is easy specifically for deterministic components, like when you add some um, PDF computation that you can check that it returns uh, values, uh, what it should, should return. But then when uh, we combine many, many of these different parts, um, it's called system testing, testing the whole software, which can be complex combination. And then we can do this, like for stand, to test that is the whole system providing results, which are then comparable to verified results. And of course, this is more challenging with stochastic algorithms, as every time we run them, uh, the result can be different. But um, And it's also it's possible that just by chance, for some kind of posture or the results would be okay. Um, and so, so overall testing. At some point, when we are when we think, think that okay, now um, the algorithm implementation and all the other parts are actually implemented so that it, the the whole system is producing um, what we want, there might be at some point that we make 
small changes. They are not necessarily an algorithm, they might be in some part like in stand math library, and then we want to, it's easier in that case just to test that is the new version returning results comparable to previous version. But again, this is challenging with stochastic algorithms and limited numerical accuracy. Even if we are changing some part of deterministic computation, some math code computing log probability density function, there's some change and even just changing the compiler optimization might change the order of the computation of floating point operations, which can change the last bits of this floating point representation and which in stochastic algorithm can eventually actually uh, cause um, quite big changes in the end result. And again, so we need to consider regression uh, testing with uh, stochastic algorithms. And again, it's useful that we can compare it for um, many different types of postures, because then we are also more likely to cover uh, different parts um, of the math library too. Assuming then that also after the changes, uh, our software seems to be producing desired results, we might be also then interested in performance changes. Um, even if the algorithm didn't change or the, um, all these like math library things didn't break, there can be significant pin speed changes. And then we can run in the same environment, same computer, same compiler, two different versions, and then check um, is, are there time differences. And again, uh, it helps if we can run with different types of models so that we are covering bigger part of the, uh, like the math library code in stat. Um, in addition of this software testing, actually the, like the, uh, the main thing started to kind of think that um, why this would be useful was that since there are many times people writing, um, developing new algorithms, writing papers on those, and then someone asked that, oh, would, could this be useful for Stan? And then we go read the paper and there's four different models used with maybe up to 10 dimensional posters. And then um, it would be useful to make it easy to analyze and uh, uh, test different algorithms, whether they are actually producing the desired results, but also um, speed, thing, speed accuracy performances. They do different types of algorithms than which affect a bit of this, uh, how this testing and comparison is made. There are these asymptotically unbiased algorithms, such as Markov chain Monte Carlo methods, which theory says that if we run them infinite time, would, the error would go to zero. Of course, these may have significant bias in finite time, and specifically given some postures, we know, for example, that the dynamic HMC in Stan, um, due to this discretization of Hamilton and dynamics has difficulties if the posture curvature is very different in different parts, which may lead to divergences, which may then lead to uh, biased results in finite time. And then it would be required um, unpractically a long time to get uh, that bias away. There are also then asymptotically biased approaches, even with infinite time, variational inference with parametric approximate distribution. If that is, does not match the true distribution, there's some error stays, although this error might be quite small, so that we can get some um, practical useful results. And of course, also in this asymptotically biased algorithms, them in finite time, there can be much, much bigger bias because of like bad optimization. So it's um, useful to be able to check for the asymptotic unbiased that um, at least 
in good cases, the asymptotics kick in, and in asymptotically biased cases also then, in which cases this kind of, um, which kind of postures these can handle uh, easily. By having this very large set of different types of postures helps that we can do explorative analysis also. Just run it with hundreds of postures and then check what kind of postures we get good accuracy and for what kind of postures we get bad accuracy. And so we can go beyond just saying that, okay, um, in 50% of cases, new algorithm uh, is good as good as the old algorithm, but instead we can go and see where there are possible differences. We can also then compare speed versus accuracy, trade-off between algorithms, um, like how many log density evaluations we needed to get short line error, um, and how these again differ in, in, in different cases. And by having this large set of posteriors, uh, when people propose new algorithms, if they also then have an easy way to make this for the bigger set, it gives more general as a bit um, information about the generalizability of these algorithms. Like, do they really work also with higher dimensional examples? Do they really work with hierarchical models, funnels? Uh, do they have problems with multimodality and so on? And so we hope that the, for the many People could also use this already during the algorithm development, but then of course when they also uh, write a paper and report results and make it easy, easy for them to make these experiments for their algorithms. Um, in addition of testing algorithms, we can use this for diagnostic development. So if we find out that some algorithm does not work for some of these posteriors, we want to then know, is there a diagnostic which can say that, okay, this did not work. And so we can also find out which diagnostics are um, good. Uh, because then sometimes like fast inference algorithm, which works at least in some cases, but has a self-diagnostic that can detect when it did work or when it didn't, is also very, very useful things to have. So if we are going to have this collection of code available for all this testing, it's sure then that people will go and copy them. So we need to have the code that use the best practices for these models, except we are also going to have some intentionally bad parameterizations, intentionally bad priors, because we want to have intentionally some bad posture distributions so that it's possible to have algorithm and diagnostic development. Because sometimes, even if people want to make very careful models, they will get bad postures, but we can also make these intentionally. Or sometimes people unintentionally make models which have bad postures, uh, bad posture geometry, and then we want that these diagnostics are able to find out when the um, inference doesn't work well. So we will have also these difficult posteriors, but with then uh, labeling them specifically that don't copy these um, bad priors to your own, your own models. It's also then when we have this collection of code and data in this database, it's useful for providing examples in teaching and vignettes. So we can say for the students that, okay, um, if you are, take this kind of model and then you can download it like this and then you can modify it your own, your own, for your own example or if your home assignment is to some simple metropolis uh, algorithm or something like that, you can uh, get also the reference results. Here's an uh, the 
just illustration, quick illustration. So then we have this poster object. So easy access. So we first have connected to this database and then we can get some um, basic information about like here, eight schools uh, from Rubin 1981, center hierarchical model for eight schools. We can get stand code for that. We can get data and we can get this reference poster and we have the information about how this was um, generated and then we use posterior packets uh, to show uh, data for the draws and then we can do conversion. I'll, I'll come back to a bit, bit of this um, reference posterior thing. What's working progress is that we need to also now add these more of these tags about the poster in geometry, whether they are unimodal, multimodal, panel, uh, what other things we may know, easy, uh, difficult. We already have there like dimensionality, which is already, um, as most of the algorithms work well in less than 10 dimensions. So it's important to also that we have a lot of these higher dimensional examples. We could also have a tag for kind of trust level because sometimes we have analytic solution. So we know that this is certainly um, good reference case uh, and we, we get kind of infinite accuracy for the um, analytic expectations. Could have trust level as trusted MCMC so that we know that it's easy enough posterior that like Stands dynamic HMC will certainly be able to get um, that well explored. Um, and then, because we have some of these posteriors we intentionally put there that are challenging, then we might have just a, the best effort solution, but possibly missing some part. We might have this kind of um, included there too. The model object, uh, currently we have them described with stand language, but uh, we are going to support also TensorFlow Probability and Pyro um, to get more um, people to use it. Uh, currently the design is so that uh, only probabilistic programming languages that specify more or less joint posterior, so no chunks or bugs type of uh, um, frameworks. And then including relevant references and documentation all data in the same JSON format, uh, references, documentation, and so people can access also this even if they are not using STAT. Um, reference poster draws. Currently we've decided to limit somehow the how much data we are storing. So storing um, posteriors with 10,000 draws. For the analytic cases we could also store just the analytic expectations, but in general, we um, from the joint posture we have ten thousand rows. Sometimes we can uh, get them just uh, from direct simulation, but then in in general we are assuming that stand dynamic HMC is able to do it, and then given careful diagnostics and thinning to get independent, almost independent rows. So we are doing all these careful diagnostics, small R hats, no divergences, and thinning and effective sample sizes around 10,000 uh, to um, kind of the maximize the efficiency of what, what is stored for all different quantiles. And then we are also, of course, including the configuration, how these were obtained and the um, diagnostics. So we are in progress of adding more new posters, hopefully soon more than 450. Uh, we include these poster expectations and their Monte Carlo standard errors. So in analytic case, we could have then a zero error. Um, and having this poster expectation readily pre-computed is, 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 is useful. Uh, some pyro and TensorFlow probability models more recommendations for making tests and comparisons in this when we are comparing posterior draws from new algorithm to old algorithm or draws 
after changing the software to uh, old, how to do this in highly dimensional joint posture cases. And of course, we hope uh, for the double line to go there with stand community. That's all.